Well, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. I'm Corny Swiss, and today we have quite the doozy of a replay. It is uh, long, so you're going to need to strap in. You're going to need to get your popcorn, get your get your drinks, uh, pause the video if you need to at any time, go to the bathroom or you know whatever, because this replay felt really, really long, and looking at the timestamp of the video, it is long. But I'm driving around the KV-1 Premium on Kursk. And I'd been trying to get Kursk again with a German tank. Because I hadn't, I hadn't played Kursk as the Germans in a long time. I played it as the Russians a lot. And I kind of wanted to play it as the Germans. It's just, this map suits the German guns so well. And especially playing as a heavy tank, there's very little that can stop you. There's an enemy AAA who's decided to shell our position a little bit, but he is way, way off there. What I like about War Thunder is that I have to account for the fact that I'm on a hill and my shell is actually curving through the air, which is really, really cool in my opinion. But before we get too far into the tank talk, um, I'm going to be, uh, today that I'm recording this, yesterday when this video goes out, I've actually... I was surprised that hit. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to be picking up Far Cry 4. Because, honestly, I didn't know it came out today. I've been too focused on schoolwork and things like that, so I haven't really been paying attention. And I know GTA 5 for the next-gen consoles just came out, so... It's also on the list, but that'll probably be later. But I was going to go get Far Cry 4 maybe get a little bit of playing in in before I take uh, my test on Thursday because I have because I've been you know working hard studying hard things like that so you you might see some content from that over the weekend uh, like I said in yesterday's video I'm not going to be uh, I'm not going to be around so all the videos will be pre-uploaded and Phil will be filling in gaps and uh, taking a little bit more of an active role in comments and things like that just to make my life easier I think so so hopefully I'll have some footage of that some gameplay and maybe I'll do a voiceover or something like that or maybe I'll do record my voice live or something like that we'll figure it out because honestly I really really loved Far Cry 3 it was easily one of my favorite games ever and uh, so I've been very very excited about Far Cry 4 just didn't know when it came out but now it's out, so YOLO. But going to be playing that, and I think that should be pretty cool. But what's happened so far in this replay is we shot at a few tanks sitting on the, the main ridge, and now we've gotten bored of that. We're all advancing, pushing down through this valley. Nailed myself that uh, uh, ZSU-37. And there is a heavy tank way out there who is receiving quite the pummeling by our team. I was trying to get him before he really got moving, but he is hauling butt now. And actually, I got right there, I hit his engine and transmission, which, uh, really bad for him, I'd say. He is still moving, though, which is also not the best. But now he's kind of slow down. This is kind of what curse boils down to, is you spend a fair amount of time in your sniper view spreading the good news and uh, really hammering away at the enemy positions. And the we get the assist on the IS-1. Now this T-3485 is just hauling butt. He is moving really, really fast down here. Everyone's just shooting at him. Tons of shells going his way, but we're all missing. And he's going to basically kind of hole up down there. And we're just going to keep pummeling him. This is when it's important to pay attention to battle messages so you know if he's been knocked out or not. For example, I'm shooting over there. That's where he is, but I'm just missing. I think the shell is going high. Or else ever so slightly low. But... I'm kind of getting bored of shooting over there. It's, uh, I mean, I'm shooting at a target I can't see 
so it's very difficult to hit. But eventually what I need to do is get up onto the actual ridge that runs north-south on this map and deal with the enemy tanks that are going to be pushing along the western part of the map towards our AI and eventually our base. And It's going to be... It's an interesting battle. I don't think I've ever driven around this much in Kursk. But uh, I think we're going to kind of... Alright, so we've skipped ahead maybe three and a half minutes of aimlessly driving up this hill. And what I'm doing now is that there's a heavy tank spotted on the other side of this ridge, so there he is. And we are going to give the good news to the back of his turret. Because he, uh, he is not looking at us, and he really should be. So, there you are, sir. KV-85. And now you can see on the mini-map just how much shit is over here. There are medium tanks all over the place. There's all kinds of enemies around here. And they are all going to eventually take shots at me. Now, part most of what's actually hitting my tank is uh, the AI artillery batteries. But it's always good to be in sniper scope when you're not quite sure where the enemy is because a lot of times they'll give it away by shooting at you, which is reasonable. And when you're in a KV-1 angled at long range, there's not many guns in the game that can really give you issues that this tank sees at least. So I'm just kind of dialing in the shots. I will eventually get this guy. But he might make it below the hill. And actually my gun depression fails me right there, which doesn't doesn't happen often this tank. The tank has really, really good gun depression. But we'll leave him alone because quite frankly I'm not scared of his gun at this range. There's I don't think he can actually seriously damage me. There are, however, a lot of tanks pushing towards our base, and what's, I guess, nice is that we had some guys go back, but then we also had people who got knocked out and then spawned, actually, in the, uh, just spawned and then, you know, turned and went the other way to defend. I thought this guy was going to keep running, but he just keeps stopping, which, you know, is fine. Now he's pretty well and truly disabled. And he got taken care of. Because, well, why not? But the KV-1 is definitely a tank that I feel okay about advancing through the middle of the field at Kursk towards enemy positions. I mean, it's just a very durable, very strong tank. And I, honestly, I would say... It's a really competitive rank 3 German tank. I mean, it does see T-3485s, but you can handle those. It's not an issue. The, uh, whereas the Russian rank 3 premium, the T-34-5743, is, uh, there's some tanks it runs into that, yeah, it can handle it, but if it, it's not, it won't deal, do well in the whole one-shot thing. It's generally not going to one-shot a tank. It might. If you hit the directly hit the right thing, but in my experience, the T the KV-1 captured KV-1 is just tier for tier the best uh, head premium in my opinion. If you were going to get one premium for the Germans, I would get the KV-1. I think it's the best by far. There are some very annoying artillery batteries just pummeling me, and they can be really annoying because. A lot of times, you can use where you got hit and where the shell came from to help tell you where, you know, the enemy are and things like that. But when you have AI shooting you all day long, it's very difficult to determine which shots are not AI and which shots are AI. I mean, there are tricks with the color of the rounds, but sometimes that doesn't really help. But T-3457 got it, so that's always good. But there are plenty of AAA, or not AAA, uh, artillery batteries around here. And we're going to have to take the time to kind of dig them out to give us, honestly, a safer patch of land to work with. Because something I think people have found out is that actually this, trip, this AI artillery can deal some fair damage to a tank. I've been set on fire before. 
I'm, all kinds of bad things have happened. But we're doing all right in this game. We're, we've controlled a majority of the map, and it's pretty safe to say I think we're winning. A majority of what we have left are heavy tanks and powerful medium tanks. The majority of what they have left are one medium tanks that have already been knocked out. So they're at a disadvantage in terms of tanks, which is always important. And the thing that makes Russian tanks competitive, I think, at this rank is they have decent guns, but also the, almost all of them get two spawns except the heavy tanks. Whereas the German tanks, you know, majority of people play the heavy tanks, which only get one spawn. So the Russian medium tanks can kind of beat you down by numbers, but when it's 1v1 and the German team is in all heavy tanks and you're in all medium tanks, it can actually be kind of tough. Especially on a wide open map like this when the heavy tank has the gun more designed for long range engagements. As a matter of fact, it almost entirely puts the ball in the heavy tank's court. It's very, very difficult for uh, medium tanks to deal with large caliber long range guns on curse, which is why especially in rank 4 you really see uh, German dominance because the Russian mediums still have 85 millimeter guns whereas every tank the Germans have had at that rank is has a very effective long range gun with high velocity ammunition pit types and things like that so I'm gonna safely say that we're gonna win this game pretty pretty convinced actually because I played it and I know what happens we win <laughs> but I thought this this was a an interesting game because I wish we had some some better statistics handling in War Thunder primarily like you know shots you know how many times a player hits you how many times AI hit you things like that because I'd be interested to see with this replay but I've run out of, well, I haven't run out yet, but I'm getting very close to running out of AP. Which is not the best. Ideally, you want AP when you can handle it, when you can have it, because it just so does so much more damage. And if you're playing a, a captured KV-1, it's never a bad idea to uh, use your turret armor. What do I mean by that? It has 110 millimeters all the way around. And it's not particularly angled anywhere. Maybe a little bit at the front, but, you know, generally it's all just metal. Well, that means you can angle against one threat and then turn your turret to deal with another. So if there's a tank shooting me from over there, like towards their uh, cap, but there's a tank off to my right that I really need to shoot, I can turn my turret and not fear about showing my side turret armor because it is actually the same thickness. So it makes this uh, the KV capture KV one a little bit more flexible than say the Tiger because the Tiger's turret is weaker on the sides, if I'm not mistaken. It might actually be the same thickness. I think it's weaker. I think it's 80 on the sides, especially the King Tigers. The King Tigers I know is only 80 on the sides, which means when you turn the turret, it basically opens you up to being blasted and generally the Russian turrets are still really thick on the side so it's not a horrible idea to turn your turret you can get away with it type thing but we're slowly slowly trying to win this game here the issue we we have for trying to finish this game is that we gotta find them this simulator battle so you gotta spot them and they're all in fairly fast tanks so it could be an issue to find them but he's disabled, and the next shot knocks him right out. But now, we just have to polish off one more enemy tank, and then there's actually going to be a medium tank who's going to be along the very western part of the map and is going to give our Panzer 470 off to the left a little bit of an issue. And we're going to deal with him. Well, the team's going to deal with him, and then we're going to dispense justice and good news the way you always should to the last enemy tank on the team. But basically we are all converging on where this guy should be. The Panzer 470 is going to start calling for help and we're going to have to 
Well, we're not going to have to, but we are going to oblige. See, he's just set the T-3485 on fire. So, and we might as well clean up some of this artillery. I mean, it's just here, it's shooting us, and it's just so annoying. Uh, if they could get, if I could nerf one thing, I would make it so the arty could never kill you, ever. Cause then you, but then we could just ignore it, and it kind of adds to the ambience and the feel of the game. And I don't know, I've been knocked out by it in really annoying situations. But I've also had it win me games and really help me against like setting a enemy tank on fire, you know, and then I get to knock it out because the fire like burned up something or his turret got jammed or something. Something bad happened to him. So it's nice. But I certainly wouldn't be sad if you couldn't be killed by it. So the last guy left is a T-3485 up over this ridge somewhere on the other side of it. I was thinking, the last time I saw him was over here. Now, the, I should have realized that the, he's probably right up next to the Panzer 470 if he's calling for help. And there he is. We've spotted him now. But we're not really in a position to engage him. I mean, it's very difficult for me to put shots on him because he's just going to run behind that ridge. And our Panzer 470 just got lit on fire. So we need to turn the tank and we need to get over there and try and save our teammate. And unfortunately, we're going to get there a little late. But this T-3485 is going to receive plenty of good news. He is going to be a spokesman of good news brought to him by the captured KV-1. So we're coming up on where he is. He just got knocked out. The Panzer 470 also got knocked out. Did it right before he died. But before the game ends, we are going to teach him not to oppose good, strong, traitorous Soviet steel. And he's going to continue to see, receive the good news from our teammates, and quite frankly, he deserved it for no other reason than the fact that uh, he was the last tank. But anyway, it was a really fun game. I mean, it took forever, but I had a lot of fun playing it, so I wanted to share it. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, you'll probably, like I said earlier, probably see some Far Cry 4 just because I'm going to play it. I'm not going to play a lot of it because I have other stuff to do, but I'm going to play it for sure. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I will catch you next time.